Looks like 16,000 points are on the line for Chaka Paladins, and not many people voting here for Triarchy. A lot of points here for Chaka Paladins. Everyone's kind of voting for Chaka Paladins right now. It's still anybody's game, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to see how this works out. This can still go either way. Maybe uh, Triarch makes a comeback here and takes the, takes the attack and uh, makes breaks even, man. A couple thousand points just came in for uh, Triarchy as well. Good luck to both teams. Let's see our unicomps look pretty much very similar this or, or the same. Uh, not any alchemists this time though for um, for Triarchy. I guess they felt they were not uh, worthwhile. Okay. All right, all right. Let's see if they do a lot. If the strats the same or very similar. We'll have to find out very shortly, ladies and gentlemen. Best of luck to both teams. All right, all right. So they're going for immediate, immediate, uh, anti already right away. It does like a CB Twix and Eagle 3 will make, try and make a little ladder push here. Uh, Jason was trying to anti those towers right away. Not a lot of infantry really set up here for, um, for... It actually looks like Chocolate Paladins has manned every single corner. Hold on. Let me zoom out completely. They are in a very interesting spot. They have four men lined up on tab left and then two guys on tab right. They are completely spread along these walls watching pretty much all parameters of the wall including far tab left with only one tower lands. Um, at this point in time, it's a very interesting strat to commit two guys over here. I won't probably commit one considering it does look like the majority of Triarchy is centralized. Um, we'll have to see how this plays out for them. Um, I mean, yeah, we'll definitely have to see how this plays out. A couple guys coming tab right mid here for Triarchy and on tab right all together a few guys as well. It does look like Chaka Palance is going to respond right away. One guy climbing on tab left as well. Uh, a couple guys just really kind of vibing, just shooting smarty at this point in time. Not a lot of action happens yet. It does look like tab right mid tower will land decisively, which is expected. You know, no arty. You're going to expect these towers to land right away. On tab right side, it does look like Kaz Tesorpa is just scouting it out, not really making a play. It does look like they're not really infantry holding, though, uh, for tri for Chocolate Palance right now. Not a lot of infantry up on the walls at this point in time. Um, it does look like they'll do some gate, a little gate uh, action there. We'll throw some javelins in there to try to harass a little bit. Yep, a couple javelins centralized right now. A nice Scorpio shot coming all the way back there. Almost hits Ori Hill, but it does not. They Chocolate Palette, wow. Wow. Chaka Paladins doesn't give a fuck about A. They are saying, we're not wasting any units. We're going to fight for 15 minutes on home point. They don't care about B. They don't care about A. They shot some arty. Tried to walk away with some troop kills. Didn't get any. Didn't get any tro troop kills. Actually, they got they killed 42 units. And it does look like at this point in time, Chaka Paladins is going to now go back into their base and pull their actual units. Get set up for a death ball. Go for immediate conservative approach here. Very interesting strat here by Chaka Paladins. I have not seen this one yet, uh, but for defense, very interesting. Triarch is probably a little bit perplexed considering they were frontlining the entire time, trying to buy time, trying to buy time, didn't want to fire at home. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Chaka Paladins is going immediately for the home point hold, relying on the fact that no arty is allowed to be used, meaning that they are pretty much safe from any arty use, which means their kill boxes are going to be very hard to take. And if you look at Chaka Paladins, they're just manning these walls. Their death box is set up. They have mauls and longswords down below mixed in with muskets, short bows and longswords, a dual blade as well. A musket up on far tab left side as well, kicks over there as well with some javelins, throwing into their supply point, knowing that they can't react unless they try a treb, which he can just gingerly move as he can see the treb coming. Interesting strat here. Interesting strat here. Close to prediction. Moderates can close to prediction. Okay, this mission has been closed.
it does look like at this point in time they do try a trip kicks kicks does get out of it for the most part maybe it takes a handful of hits there but uh, for the most part he's able to move his units out of the way equal three trying to make pressure on the walls but uh not really going to make a lot of pressure versus three short bows versus one long sword it does look like triarchy will go for a hard push here on tab left side totally ignoring the kill box that chocolate pounds has set up ripcats and kaisa cheesing the home point cheesing the safe zone with their outriders just harassing kicks being chased heavily by triarchy triarchy says fuck that i'm not taking these jabs to the face we're gonna push these walls chase kicks down kill all of his javelins and show him who's daddy shag and wagon kicks they're running for their lives trying to survive here they do lose all their units to triarchy who decisively engulfs all their units Tri chocolate pounds obviously cannot respond so they have no already themselves triarchy decisively takes the wall gets ready for a death ball push chocolate pounds getting ready in their own death ball Tries to make a play here. They did not expect that tab left push decisively. They definitely did not expect that. They would have had more guys in the safe zone with guns and shit trying to hold that down. Instead, they did not. Instead, they only had one set of jabs that were not able to cheese 15 players. That's just not possible. Based off the death spot right now, Chiarchy has been in a comfortable spot. They're stuck heavily on the walls at this point in time on tab left side. Chocolate Palace kind of has to let them see it. I mean, uh, at this point, Triarchy does have to do something, though, because um, with all the range that Chocolate Palace has in their team, they're going to have to react or get picked away very, very slowly for 14 minutes. Uh... Very nice push there by Triarchy. They really came to play as well. They said, fuck that. We're not getting shot with Jazz. We're getting in there. We're going to have some fucking fights. And we're going to make sure this is going to be a close one. It does look like uh, Chaka Palin is going to take their actual approach here with their kill boxes set up comfortably. Um, no trebs really intact here, obviously. Because it's going to be hard to treb in here. Maybe later on we'll see some trebs. But so far, no real trebs have been shot. I think one treb in, all, in total. Good fight so far, ladies and gentlemen. Good fight so far. Blake and Fnatic still manning the wall, not willing to give up mid-pressure, uh, knowing they have to climb ladders to get to them. And Blake realizing he's a pretty good dual blade, he uh, will probably one-shot someone with his ult. It does look like Chocolate Palins will use five muskets. Ladies and gentlemen, five muskets to harass, 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 with Ori Hill as a short bow also harassing. Constant harassment here, ladies and gentlemen. Constant harassment. One of the things Chocolate Pounds has always been notorious for is hero play and duel and death matches. That is a lot of their players are big death match guys. Charaki says, fuck that. We don't want to deal with those muskets. We're gonna go back into tab left side. Saying, we're gonna do the same thing again. Fuck it, I'll do it again. And they go for the supply point, which is basically undefended. Um one set of one set of banner guys there. Uh, our claim wars, excuse me there. Uh, yeah, no, there's no way. Uh, there's no way. Yeah, Triarchy definitely decisive is going to win this. No anti-cab. They charge right through those swords. Uh, Flames firing away on Twix right now. The Flames do survive for the most part. Big death ball approaching by Triarchy. Chocolate Paladins is now responding heavily. Realizing their supply point is vital. Does not want to give that up. Does not want to be hit from that angle. Does very uncomfortable with that angle. Chocolate Paladins now decisively taking the fight to them. And Triarchy will have to win here, ladies and gentlemen. They will have to decisively win here. And here's why. If they do not... Guess where Chocolate Palin spawns? Right behind them. And that's exactly what you don't want. It's a two-front war here very soon. So at this point in time, Chocolate Palin is really looking for an opportunity here to make that situation happen. Very even trades right now. A lot of kills being happening right now. 350 dead right now for Triarchy to 140 dead for Tri for Chocolate Paladins. It does look like Chocolate Palin will walk away with this very decisively on the supply point. Uh, clears the majority of the team. Almost a full wipe. I think three more three players currently alive right now for Triarchy. Chaka Palons really came to play, ladies and gentlemen. They rotated very nicely for that and won their exchanges there. Uh, very tough spot. Very tough loss right there for Triarchy on that first that first push. Um, that was a big eat there for Chaka Palons. They just bought themselves probably another two minutes of peacefulness uh, with that clear. Very nice try by Triarchy, but they will not have, be able to recover from that for at least a couple minutes while the rest of the team spawns in. Currently on the field right now, uh, there are 1,007 units still in play for uh, Chaka Palins. 911 left for Triarchy, so it's still anybody's match. Triarchy will now take that opportunity to push mid put mid push mid ladders, get a good situation, get, get their archers set up, get their ball boys set up. Chaka Palins says, fuck that, we're going to respond right back to that, and they immediately death ball that with five guys, and with a nice plethora of hero classes as well. Pretty unique to see a lot of hero classes. A lot of people use the Zerg Mole or Zerg Sword Sword these days. It's good to see a mix of different classes. A lot of range on the field for Chaco Palons in terms of heroes. A lot of range. In a no-arty scenario, it's very nice. Especially when they've got pro musket players. 
And as you can see, Chaka Palins is decisively, decisively eating on this wall right now. Um, Triarchy was not able to climb in time, and the units are just getting absolutely obliterated. One Trump comes in now. Uh, we'll have to see if that lands and if it's successful for Triarchy to be able to make a push here. But with all the range here that that, Ch that Chaka Palins has, they're just going to melt them as they come. And a central push does come for Triarchy here with four short swords and a maul coming in. And Chaco Palins is here with three muskets and a longbow. <laughs> four muskets and a longbow. <laughs> they got to be kidding me with this matter. They better, it's, it's honestly pretty fun to watch. It's crazy to see all this range play. Uh, it does look like Chaco Palins wins the mid wall decisively there. Triarchy looking for the next objective, looking for the next push. It's going to be very hard for them to take home here with 10 minutes left. Um, Flames, ISGs, and Pikes mixed in. It's going to be a very challenging situation here for uh, Triarchy, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be very hard indeed. Chaka Pounds is very set up. Wow. <coughs> At this point in time, it does look like the... Uh, the walls, the uh, the muskets are just pushing and harassing and dropping bombs and slows. Really not letting uh, uh, poor uh, Chaki really get uh, an opportunity to make a play here, man. It hurts. It hurts to see. Got a little 1v1 action happening right here. Uh, let's go in for a closer look. It's uh, up 2v1, excuse me. And it does look like that poor Pike will take a loss here. And at 3v1, it's over. And... It does look like Charaki did get completely uh, pushed out here, ladies and gentlemen, of uh, home point area. Charaki trying to get a regroup coming. Uh, they are still down a couple guys here. Um, Charaki Palin is maintaining the back walls, make sure their kill box can't be harassed. Are in a very comfortable position right now. A lot of time being wasted. Um, currently 500 units down for uh, Triarchy and 173 down for Chaka Palance. Looks like Triarchy will go for a phase two approach, retry to climb walls. This time they're really going for a push. They're even on the units climbing. Multiple heroes climbing as well. They've got one hero. The Chaka Palance only has one hero and it's Iron Reapers. Before the units climb, we'll have to see if he's able to secure it long enough for his team to respond. His team is heavily responding right now. A nice little premeditated trip that will delay, the, that will delay Chaka Palance by at least another 20 seconds. It does look like Triarchy will get a much better wall approach this time. A lot of units climbing up with some losses, but it does look like Chaka Palance is going to take some serious losses with heroes as well. Triarchy is very comfortably set up their units on the wall at this point in time. Uh, it does look like they're just climbing and climbing and climbing. Trev's going off. They're really trying to make a push here. They really want this wall desperately. Uh, Chaka Palance at this point is just kind of waiting for the traps to go off and then charging in with either Reapers or shooting their muskets. Chaka Palance is not is kind of at the give the wall at this point in time. Triarchy is really kind of there. Um, they're definitely spending a lot of units to make it happen, ladies and gentlemen. But I don't think it's enough for uh, Chaka Palace has masked up their units on top of the wall, realizing that they're just all on top of the wall now. So they're just why, why not commit there? But these traps going off are pretty juicy, ladies and gentlemen. These are juicy traps. Like that trap lands, that's gonna be big. And there it is, right on top of the unit for Tra Chaka Palace gets slammed by that trap. Chaka gets a really juicy trap in there. And they got range firing as well from down below. Javelin's coming in. Units waiting to push. Chaka Palace is really committing to this wall. It's an interesting strat. They're really kind of fighting over the wall. Objective is pretty light right now. Another trap coming in. Chaka Palace is just committing to this wall, taking the traps to the forehead, and saying, fuck it, we'll take these traps to the head. We can, we can sacrifice the units. We're only down half their units. We're going to take these traps. And that's what they do. They take the traps to the head and take the wall back from Triarchy, who gets pushed off completely again. Wow. And it does look like Triarchy does get a full wipe here. Uh, uh, not a full wipe, but uh, four here are still alive, 11 down. Uh, five trebs have now been used. Uh, five trebs are left, excuse me, for a Triarchy. They were just trebbing and trebbing that. They really wanted to hold there. And unfortunately uh, for them, uh, Draco Palance did decisively secure that. And a light sally out comes as well by uh, none other than a few heroes with Chaka Palance who sees the situation, snowballs on top of it to buy some time and harass it even further with their range classes and their Armager Lancers or Cataphracts. Really kind of harass uh, poor Triarchy here who's just trying to make plays happen, make something come out of, make something out of nothing. They have a lot of range on the field right now. Uh, one set of guns, and actually they have one set of game range on the field right now with their uh, units trying to respond to uh, Chaka Palance's uh, slight, like, uh, poking. I have to say, Chaka Palance has really done a good job of being like a good thorn. Forcing teams to make play, forcing Triarchy to really kind of uh, push and uh, and push when they don't really want to push. Um, that's the uh, perks of having all heroes playing ranged, um, ranged, ranged heroes. I mean, look at all those muskets, man. Long bows and muskets and short bows. How do you react to that? You can't. You just get bombed and bombed. You're slowed. You make a push, you're slowed. Next thing you know, you're flanked. It's a very tough situation right now for Triarchy. Uh, Current Castle is definitely a defense oriented map, in my full opinion. <clears throat> Chark, you're looking for another strategy. You're looking for another play to happen. We'll have to see how that works out for them. I 
actually liked the tab left idea, but it does look like Chocolate Palance this time is decisively watching that. Uh, making sure that they don't push that. With gun setup as well. Sorry if I'm zooming around while I'm trying to look for the fights. <clears throat> At this point in time, Chocolate Palance is going for a little trade here, a little death ball, death corner right here. We're just heroes though, not committing any units. They're just trying to harass those Iron Reapers that are two sets of Iron Reapers. They're just harassing Whiteley here. Uh, it does look like Chocolate Palance did send in their units by mistake, and those units get absolutely obliterated. Kicks taking out OG Moss on top of the wall. Actually, the wall of Reese, the Tabloth wall secured by Chocolate Palance. went for another Tabloth approach. Chocolate Palance is definitely set up for it this time. They have guns in the safe zone that can't be killed that are literally invincible. Plus, uh, it looks like Pike, uh, uh, it looks like just uh, Fort Brocky out here mixed in as well. F1 formation blocking off any cav rushes. And it does look like Triarchy will make a, a light retreat here, try to regroup, and uh, they will take some, uh, some, 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 they will lose a couple here. Uh, Blake taking down Riddish Storm, and it does look like uh, Kix is trying to, who is this? Kix is trying to escape from Nasu, who is uh, heavily approaching him, even though he's in 2v1 scenario. He is not letting that must get away. Uh, he does have no choice, though. Kix drops, drops two decisive bombs that lets him escape decisively and gets away. Uh, it does look like Nasu is also going to get away, though. He is fighting currently a short sword battle over here. Let's just go to the home point real quick. Holy fuck! Triarchy does make a home point push. Chocolate Palace does respond. I was so focused on that 1v1 that I missed this. Uh, it does look like Triarchy went for a full YOLO here. Hassar charged the kill box. Chocolate Palace is heavily not is heavily fighting back. A lot of cav in the field. Ford Brocky is now getting mixed in for Chocolate Paladins. who are looking for the looking to make a play, looking to make it happen. And uh, this might be the final push here for uh Triarchy as they do get cleared out and they're down a thousand units. Um, currently 300 units on the field right now for Triarchy and only and 700 on the field right now for Chocolate Palance. It could be a four minutes of, uh, of a tough time. This could be a really tough ending here for uh, Triarchy here. We'll have to see what they do to recover from this or if they miss it. That was actually a really nice push. <clears throat> that could have been different if they did that like 10 minutes earlier. It does look like Chocolate Palance is aware that they are low in units as well. And uh, immediately starts harassing, killing off the rest of the team. Uh, at this point in time, there's only two players left alive for Triarchy who are running along the wall trying to stay alive and escape. Um, at this point, uh, Chocolate Pounds pretty much regained Karak Castle, securing pretty much everything, as we can see. Um, and it might be uh, three minutes of uh, bloodshed here. Uh, we'll have to see, ladies and gentlemen. We'll have to see. It does look like at this point in time, the, f the final few tribes will go off. Uh, Triarchy uh, is still respawning. Uh, it does look like Chocolate Palance has full on soured into a trap. They just they just eating these traps. Uh, that was a nice trap too. Uh, Chocolate Palance is now full on out here, securing all supply points, resecuring everything, so that way Chocolate can't pull anywhere, and they just have to respawn into some deep shit. And as you can see, they're respawning all the way in the back, trying to get some type of team together, trying to get some type of life together. They still do have 300 units that they can play with. Um, is it enough? I'm not so sure. Uh, at this point, they're just getting picked off, unfortunately. It does look like uh, Chocolate does have a nice little respawn. They mass up their respawn. They spawn in five heroes. And it does look like Chocolate Palance does not waste any time and runs right back inside, playing very conserved. They go for a little harass. They could have got a couple guys still out there harassing. But uh, for the most part, uh, Chocolate Palance has retreated actually back to make it happen. It does look like uh, Chocolate did lose one player. It looks like maybe it's possibly in DC. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see if that was a DC or not. I'll have to ask uh, CB. At this point in time, it does look like uh, Triarchy is just trying to make a final stand here. Two minutes left on the clock. Uh, it's a very uh, unlikely chance that Triarchy will be able to take home at this point. Um, Tucker Palance is kind of uh, running around outside. They have guys on home point watching as well. A couple guys on tab left wall also just vibing as well. I'm um, kind of curious what those guys on tab left wall are actually doing. Um, Triarchy does have three heroes going back to central approach, put some pressure on. But I have to say, uh, Chaka Palance has a massive amount of units still on the field. 637, as a matter of fact. Uh, very decisive uh, uh, unit count right now for uh, uh, Chaka Paladins here. I'm just gonna go into this tunnel. As you can see, Pike Militia is blocking off for the ranged players. Looks like the uh, OG Fnatic has gotten his uh, gold archers out to harass with the dogs. A couple of Hussars still on the on the field as well. Yep, a lot of units still in still in play here for, these are all the units here in play right now for Chaka Paladins. It doesn't look, looks like only white units are left for Triarchy. Uh, it's just gonna be over very shortly. One minute and 20 seconds on the clock, ladies and gentlemen. Chaka Palance realizing that they have full advantage. Goes for another Sally out. It does look like some Florida Brockies are still in play for Triarchy. They do brace right there, and the Hussars charge right into it. Those Hussars get completely wiped by the Florida Brockies. Triarchy is gonna go down, but they are gonna take some people with them. 
It does look like Chaka Palace still goes through with it. They say, fuck those four Barkers. We're going in and making a play happen here no matter what. Chaka has really kind of been slamming with these Trebs in like random place here and there. But Chaka Palace has been eating it. They say, just, I don't give it. They just don't care. They're just going in. Look, they got all these pikes rushing out. Head first. Make sure to make a play happen. It does look like Triarchy will stay wiped for the remainder of the game. Um, yeah. Ori Hill taking a cup. Might die here. Possibility. Eagle 3 looking to make at least one kill. And he does not. Uh, Ripcats does take him down. Another spawn in for Triarchy, but he has no units. So it's, uh, he's going to go for a run here. He is going to confirm to go for a run to the tower. Try to get up. And he uh, decisively does not. The muskets are just too much. All those bombs, man. What are you going to do? There's nothing you can do. At this point, uh, is what it is. I, you know, it was a, a very tough fight for Triarchy. Uh, Chaka Palins really came to play, ladies and gentlemen. They really came to play. Uh, I'm very impressed with the uh, the amount of momentum Chaka Palins has been playing with. The last time I saw them play, it was they were a different team. Uh, they really have changed since I've last streamed them, and I'm very impressed with their gameplay. Triarchy definitely fought hard. But um, Chocolate Palance is really just, just came to play, man. They just came to play. And uh, that's going to be it. Uh, that is going to be a shutdown for uh, for uh, for uh, Cho Chocolate Palance 2-0. Two two, they're, going, they're, going they're going to go 2-0 against uh, Triarchy here. Ripcats walking with MVP, 7 hero kills, 144 unit kills. Kicks following closely behind, 4 hero kills and 188 unit kills. And Blake, 10 hero kills. Ori Hill, 11 hero kills. Yu Wong, 9 hero kills. Holy shit, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, Chaka Palins definitely came to play on defense. They gave A, they gave B, set up on home, and feasted. Um, I do not think uh, I do not think uh, Triarchy was expecting that, and they definitely uh, had a very tough time uh, trying to make a play happen. They had a couple, they had one really good push on tab left side, but uh, did not win the exchange, and uh, didn't even bother getting sandwiched. They just lost the exchange, and uh, took the loss there. Uh, unfortunately for Triarchy, they do get they do lose 0-2 here. Um, now Ace Victor does walk away with MVP. Uh, with CP falling closely behind and Tyron King and Eagle 3. Uh, a very, very tough... Like I said, ladies and gentlemen, Correct Castle was very, very defense-oriented. I, I, I personally love Correct Castle, but, um, you know, there's different strats to it, and on your initial push, if you do really bad in your initial push, um, it'll cost you, especially on Correct Castle, because they can just feast on you while you respawn. And uh, Chaka Palins does that. They really came to play. I'm going to post battle analysis. They really came to play. They used the already on top of the walls, picked off. They, they didn't even really shoot towers. They were just looking to pick off units and buy as much time and then kill as many units as possible before they have to actually use theirs. And that's what they did. They Chaka Palins like, used the already. And as soon as Tri Triarchy was pushing slowly, um, waited for towers to land, which is expected. Um, so, of course, when the towers landed, they went for a full push, expecting them to take some big win back their unit losses. Um, but they did not. They were shocked to find out that Chaka Palins had all their units still back in the spawn all the way over here ready to go get set up the death ball and they hold mid wall the entire time for the most part and triarchy really kind of ends here heavily ends here as you can see all the red mixed in with the blue i would say triarchy probably lost about 500 to 600 units in this little mid spot on the wall um chaka pounds really really feasted there they were not willing to get mid wall they had a really nice kill box set up as well and uh, really kind of came to play uh, I'm really impressed with uh, Chaka. I'm telling you guys, I, you should, between now and then, Chaka Pounds is a different team. They really are. Um, very, very, very impressive. Um, so on the tab left side, of course, we also have Triarchy uh, trying to make a big push here. It was actually a decent play. They get pretty far, but um, Chaka Pounds responds and also has respawn, and they get sandwiched, and they, they lose the exchange on supply point here and get pushed all the way back out. But um, ladies and gentlemen, that does conclude it for uh, Chaka Pounds versus Triarchy.